Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about Fonnie Willis's responding brief in the 11th Circuit to Mark Meadows's efforts to remove his case. So remember, Meadows on the first day makes the motion to remove, says he was, you know, a federal official, which he was, but just he's got a colorable federal defense, which is basically he was just doing chief of staff kind of stuff. Uh, and that's a very big job and it's got political ramifications and it's 24 seven. And, you know, you set up calls for the, um, president, et cetera, et cetera. And remember, he decided to testify, uh, rolled the dice big time and and it didn't work out well. And one way in particular it didn't work out well is he testified that he had nothing to do with the effort to wrangle the phony state electors and was then confronted with an email which showed him doing exactly that and had to uh, eat his words and it harmed his credibility. And since it's a motion that he bears the burden of proof on that might have been part of what the district court had in mind in saying that uh, he, that he doesn't have a claim for removal and sending it back to state court. All right. At that point, Meadows appealed as he has a right to do. And we're going to see this playing out with the others. Jeff Clark, the three Georgia state electors, and I think at the end of the month when his uh, deadline for uh, bringing it runs out, Donald Trump. And they'll also bring these appeals, and it looks like the 11th Circuit is ready for them and ready to act in uh, short order. Now, the district court opinion in Meadows was pretty um, thoughtful or solid in a way that makes it harder to reverse on appeal because the court really focused on Meadows not having carried his burden of proof. That's a really sort of specific district courty kind of thing as opposed to a question of law. Uh, but it also, there is, including in the 11th Circuit and all these things, a kind of rhetorical um uh, battle here, and it depends on how one characterizes the conduct, right? So Meadows says, ah, setting up meetings and briefing the president, and Fonnie Willis says, fomenting a rebellion and trying to uh, meddle in state elections. Um, and by the way, that's a very strong way for her to put it rhetorically, because the whole idea of the of a removal suit is to protect federal officials from states' uh, efforts to hamstring them or keep them from doing their job. And this looks like it turns it on its head because this is a federal official trying to meddle in state elections and there's just no federal authority to do that. So that, that uh, you know, uh, may, is the sort of uphill battle that um, Meadows is waging. All right. But so in the Court of Appeals, he, he basically doubles down on the things he was saying on the facts and then makes one other argument. Uh, and it, it picks up on a um, specific request for briefing that the district court did. He says, look, I've got all these overt acts I'm charged with, all this stuff. If any of them uh, that the state wants to bring totally or, you know, down the middle in my federal duties, then you got to remove it because part of it, you know, uh, has the justification for for removing a case. And so you you need to do it. And if that's true, there's clearly some conduct alleged in the complaint where he's acting like a chief of staff. Okay. So, he back now to Fonnie Willis in the 11th uh, Circuit. So mostly she repeats the the characterization of, of his authority, relies on the factual findings, does the point I was just making, which uh, so many observers had really um, focused on, which is, hey, this is totally backwards. Uh, what Meadows was trying to do and justify is federal intervention in state 
um, elections where they have no business at all. Um, and so all of those seem strong. And then there is this one little legal question that, you know, you, you, it, it feels like the stronger argument is by Fonnie Willis, but, you know, you want to really see, uh, you can imagine maybe the Court of Appeals biting on it. And that's why I think they're moving quickly so that if they do, the Fonnie Willis can still react back in the state court case, for instance, with a superseding indictment. But it's this one act thing. So what Fonnie Willis says, it's, it's not a single act that even though that, that, uh, you know, uh, the, what, what Meadows is saying, it, it's not enough. What it is, is the claim. So what you have to think about is whether the claim overall, and here that's basically the crime, he enters into a RICO conspiracy, et cetera. Is that something uh, that um, when you analyze, it looks like it's federal officials doing federal, um, their, their federal duties, or does it look like it's Mark Meadows, uh, chief of staff doing his chief of staff duties. And when you put it on those terms, it really doesn't, right? It, it looks like he's meddling in state affairs and doing all kinds of things at Trump's behest, but that's no defense. Uh, that a federal official really has no business doing. So there is this little legal question about how they'll define the sort of locus of analysis. Is it act by act? So if you get an individual act that looks like it was, you know, bona fide federal, yet do you have to then say removal's okay? And even if they do, there's probably an opportunity for Fonnie Willis to change the in, up the indictment, et cetera. Or will the circuit say, no, 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 it's it's silly to say any individual act, especially in a sprawling case like this, but look overall at the claim and here the, the district court got it right uh, when it found that the when you look at what he's charged with in the overall RICO uh, conspiracy, this is not the sort of thing that chief of, chiefs of staff are supposed to do so. We affirm the district court, so Meadows is back to state court with really nowhere to go. Probably too late for him to cooperate with either state or federal authorities. You know, he stayed out of trouble for a long time, but now this is a real kind of last shot for him. If he's back in state court, he's he's really, really looking at being in very hot water. And um, as I say, I think he, he's got the best shot at removal. So if, if he loses the others who have tried, I think they'll also be sort of back in the, in the pot with the other 17. Remember there are 19 total. Two of them are actually, you know, less than a month. They're going to start picking the jury. And then there's what happens to the 17 that remains to be seen. But if it includes the six people, uh, Meadows, Jeff Clark, the three Georgia state electors, and Trump, who have been trying to um, remove, it may still sort of divide out, but, you know, it may not. The state's going to say we want to try all 17 together. Anyway, that's something that will come up if uh, Meadows uh, loses, and we'll, we'll wait to see that. He gets a... Um, it's all pretty quick, but he gets, you know, to file one more brief, and then the 11th Circuit will rule and either reverse the district court, I don't think too likely, but not out of the question, or affirm and Meadows is, you know, he can try for the Supreme Court, but good luck with that. So he, he'll probably be back in the defendant's chair in before Judge McAfee in Fulton County. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, Please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.